thank you. <laughs> no problem. I mean, I'm I'm here for you, and and uh, uh, just anxious to chat with you, and I'm very grateful for your time. I know how, like I said. Oh I no, thank you. I like I said. Uh, I mean, I've had the pleasure now being on a couple times with you, and yeah. and I know that it's it's. It's an art form to be a, a good interviewer and, and, and to be able to do this. And you're always awesome because I always catch myself going, man, it's already over. That went fast. <laughs> and that's a good sign of a good conversation. Uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, your childhood because, I, you know, you're a martial artist. You, you were a dancer for a while. How does that inform your acting? Well, I think it's actually a big reason of, of, of how versatile I've become uh, as I've aged. Um, you know, I, I started breakdancing probably at 12, 13. I uh, got pretty serious with it. Was one of the better breakdancers in Scandinavia. Did a bunch of music videos and uh, it opened a lot of doors. I ended up on uh, uh, a syndicated TV show in Sweden uh, originally just to be a background dancer because the show had uh, uh, like musical guests. So like Samantha Fox was on there. And so it was that long ago, I'm aging myself. Uh, I think that Ray Beard already did, but either which way. Um, so it was really, really cool. And then instead of having actors do the one-liners, they would come and ask us and, uh, and I would gladly accept. And then you start hanging out with actors and you realize how how interesting acting is. When you deep dive into acting, it is it is an incredible thing. Uh, and it's a bottomless pool. So I really, I've just loved it ever since. And do you find acting therapeutic? Very much so. I learned so much about myself looking at life through the eyes of my characters. Um, it's, it's really, really interesting actually. Uh, and it's a nice break from being you and having all your own problems and issues and and the things that you deal with to just be somebody else for a while and and dive into their way of thinking uh is really refreshing because when you come out of the character it's it's almost like you have a brand new look at life yeah i i would imagine you know it's a way of, of as you said just getting life off your shoulders for a little bit and yeah walking a mile in someone else's shoes yes I think that's healthy for any of us. I, 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 I think it's, it's very tricky to do. So acting kind of forces you to, um, because it really, it really places you in somebody else's shoes. And now you have to justify all of their choices and decisions, um, and you can't judge them uh, because then you'll have, you know, not the performance that, that, that you need to have. So you have to look at everything through their eyes. And, and when you come out of it, you can often learn something about yourself and then that could be a good thing or maybe an, an area of improvement that you have to work on. But uh, um, I remember doing Ash and Bone playing Lucas and Lucas is such a pushover and he was driving me crazy uh, to play because I just wanted to shake him and say, do something uh, because that's me. Yeah. But, but there is something to sometimes having the patience to outlast things, um, and uh, and and I'm the guy who will run and jump on the grenade. So uh, <laughs> good for a lot of people, but not for me. <laughs> uh, well, so, you brought up you brought up Ash and Bone, which is uh, a, an incredible film. You're doing part two. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, um, Luke is such an interesting character because as I watch the, he's nothing like you. Yeah, no, he's very very opposite of me. That was that was really tough to play somebody that foreign to myself who is uh so passive aggressive and and uh he does this kumbaya thing and and i wish i could be a little bit more like him so it's nice to to get pieces of him back with me yeah. but but i'm 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 a i'm i like to confront stuff i like to deal with things immediately i i, I prefer to to do that it's just not in me to play you know, games with stuff. To me, it's like I, I, I'm the simplest guy in the world. Open book, just read it. It's it's all there. Uh, growing up in in Sweden, I mean, were you a fan of uh, the films coming from the United States? Yeah. Uh, funny enough, um, 
So I was really good uh, at English uh, in school and I never got an A plus because I refused to speak proper English because I was a kid who watched the movies and I say, I'm not going to sound like that. That's that's terrible. I wish now I would have learned a little bit better uh, uh, proper English watching all these shows now that are, are, are you know, all the Game of Thrones and whatever else there is, you all have to speak with that accent. Even the Viking shows speak with an English accent now somehow. So I guess I wish I would have uh, taken a little bit more of that on, but uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I definitely uh, uh, dove deep into to the American movies. My mom said I was five. We watched Tarzan. And I stood up and I flexed and I said, I'm gonna move to America when I get big and I'm gonna be an actor. And it's so hilarious looking back at that because I went such a long time doing everything else um, and didn't even get back into acting again till my late teens. Um, and then after that show that I said earlier, uh, I hired an acting coach and started digging into it all because I fell in love with it. But I had you know, a 15 year gap of not barely even looking at uh, at acting as a as a serious thing, or at least ten years of of, of that. Wow! And, and finding yourself in the United States, uh, immediately trying to get acting jobs. I mean, it it must have been a struggle. Yeah. So I mo I moved here uh, as a as a young adult, uh, and, and it was really tricky because uh, I didn't understand all the politics and and stuff when it comes to this. So. I, I, I moved to Detroit. I had an agency in Chicago. I had an agency in Toronto and one in New York. Mm. And I always felt myself that I don't want to go to L.A. until L.A. kind of requests my my presence. Because I, I, I've seen too many people, they run to L.A. too soon and they get eaten up by everything because they don't understand. You know, I, I've been to some casting calls for big, uh, big pictures when when it wasn't um, you know before COVID and stuff when the, when they had the big calls and I, I've been to smaller ones and I walk in and I feel like I'm pretty unique and I stand out being me but when you walk into a big casting call for a big studio you literally look around and go there's 20 me's in here um, and I could this is not going to come down to who's best necessarily. It's gonna come down to the producer and director's vision for the character more than anything else. So uh, if there's one thing I can tell anybody who's watching, just hit that ball, make contact, try to get it out of the park, but you gotta just go in and audition and lay down and walk away. Um, as a filmmaker, I can tell you, there's, it's often the best audition doesn't get, doesn't get a role. In, in coming up through the indie world and and learning the business in show business too, that's yeah. that's kind of startling because you you're signing contracts, you don't read the small print, you're sometimes screwed. Um, you, you know, you have to learn that end of it as well as you know where the money is going and and yeah. what happens if the money doesn't come in. Yeah, uh, and and also be cautious because. A lot of indie filmmakers aren't aware themselves, so they might trust that the money is coming on this and that day, and the and they start, you know, start having casting calls before they have money in, or you know, I see all kinds of craziness that happens, and it's a scary thing. And and in all honesty, that's it's scarier as a filmmaker than as an actor, because as a filmmaker, when I direct the project. I have to set aside about six months to take on a directing job. So if you say to me, I'm going to hire you to direct my film and we agree on a contract, but we're not, we haven't raised all the funds yet. And, and now I start working on this thing and then you pull the plug. There's no way for me to recover all the losses, uh, not to mention the work I've already put in. Uh, half of the time ends up just going bye-bye. So I'm trying to be a little tighter on uh, making sure 
that I ask all the right questions and have all the right answers before I before I let go because uh, two years ago we got badly hurt by a few people that uh, misled us. Uh, Katie was hired in. Uh, my wife Katie was hired in on a on a film to produce and literally did three weeks of work while they were fine-tuning the contract, which was the whole mess to begin with. And after the contract was final, the lady changed her mind. Oh. And and Katie had already put, like I said, three weeks in. Uh, I have written scripts, done shootings. Get, like I've gotten all the way to where everything was done and I was just waiting on the checks from people I thought were trustworthy who then canceled and they wiped out income for six months for me. And uh, and those are the hard parts to, when you hire a creative, it's not like they can just replace it. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they can just go and do another job. Uh, but for a director, if I've reserved you six months, those six months are gone. Yeah. And you can't get them back. There's no way. Nope. Yeah, time, time is probably, uh, you hear it all the time, time is more valuable than money, uh, and, and it sounds silly, but I I absolutely agree. Yeah, you, you, you've got to be able to budget your time and know, Yeah. you know, you got to read the, the, the signs, too. I know when I'm going to get Yeah. Started. Believe me, I know. So, yeah. Uh, but let's talk about the joyous stuff. Uh, yes. First of all, The Devil's Left Hand is one of the best thrillers I think I've ever seen. It is just oh, wow. amazing film. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, um, so I was really scared to get into the horror realm. Uh, and I, I'm not sure it's a true horror film fully. Uh, it has horror elements for sure. But uh, I wanted to tip my cap to those who came before me, uh, to my inspirations. And, and, and The Devil's Left Hand, for me, I remembered all those supernatural possession the spooky, creepy films, uh, you know, anything from, you know, The Exorcist to Poltergeist and, and all those things. I read Stephen King, um, you know, I've read everything he's he's written pretty much. So, and you can probably see that in, in my films to some degree, but uh, I was really blown away by how well received that film has been. We, we were on uh, one of the, 10 most uh, highly rated films ever or in the last decade on uh, 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 Rotten Tomatoes. You've got 100%. 100% it's 100% insane. 100% is unheard of. It, it is wild. I, I, I don't take any of that stuff for granted because it's so incredible that somebody will watch our little independent film and give it those kind of remarks. Um, it, it's just kind of breathtaking, but yeah, we're super excited about it. It's done so well. Um, are you thinking maybe about a sequel or, or using those characters again? I would love to. Uh, to be honest with you, we, we we actually have a loose outline for a prequel and a sequel. Wow. Um, the prequel, because you can obviously tell my character and Vesna's character have a past. And with the scarred face of my character, you know something happened once upon a time. And when we created our characters, we created an entire backstory that makes up for a prequel that's really compelling. So uh, uh, we may have them uh, young uh, uh, and show kind of what happened to the to the young versions of them uh, to get there. But I uh, but I always hear a sequel before prequel, so we'll probably revisit the continuation of the story first. I'd love. Um, to see we've that. had a lot of people asking about it. Uh, and, and when you go to these little, I mean, when you go to these film festivals, and I think you also attend some of the horror fests around mm -hmm. and things like that, that's probably the number one question is, is that an Ash and Bone? You know, when do I get Oh, yeah. One? Yeah, Ash and Bone uh, has been by far our number one on re uh, request for, uh, for a sequel, and we are making it. Uh, we're right now slating it for March to shoot it. Uh, and what's really cool about it is um, we have such a terrific cast lined up. So first of all, uh, and this is going to sound crazy to anyone who's seen the film, but we're bringing everybody back. <laughs> so you're saying, how is that possible? And uh, it's because it's the movies. That's why it it's possible. Uh, 
Uh, I always, you know, I, I did this myself in the devil's left hand and I kicked myself a little bit now uh, and spoiler alert. Um, the, the film is very much set up for a sequel at the ending and you know it. Yeah. Um, in Ash and Bone, you get a satisfactory ending where you feel like, man, wow. Uh, and I would rather from now on give the people the satisfactory ending. Yeah. And, and they, here, here's how I think of it. Um, you can bring anyone back in the movies. You can bring them back however many times you want to. There are no rules. You can bring in a voodoo doctor, putting some sprinkles of stuff on things and bring them right back to life. Now, the next film that's coming out is, is it Beneath Us All? So Beneath Us All just came out. It actually, it's, uh, it is uh, two weeks old. We had a premiere in LA. I tried to get you to I come out and see me and you, uh, you were, uh, as always, busy. Uh, we're going to have to figure was, out one way. <laughs> I was having a hip replaced. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll pass for that, I guess. <laughs> All right. But tell no, me a little bit No, I totally about, understand. Tell me a little bit about but, the film. So uh, it's a it's a vampire flick, uh, and and when me and Brett Miller, who who's been writing Ash and Bone, and, and now wrote Beneath Us All, and who also wrote the sequel to Ash and Bone, um, when we talked about making a vampire film, we were trying to figure out what's the right way to go because we're almost rebooting vampires because they've been kind of gone since Twilight. Mm -hmm. And the last really good vampire movie that we were talking about, sadly, we were talking about Let the Right One In was probably the last one that we both loved. Before that is Bram Stoker's Dracula and Lost Boys. Uh, and then we were talking about like old stuff, you know, uh, from anything from Nosferatu to, to uh, the Draculas of old. And we said, you know, it would be fun to do something in that style, a little older, a little bit more mystical vampire, but but to do it our way, to add the dramatic piece, uh, to, to create a setting that would be perfect for a drama, and then let's add a vampire to it. So that's kind of what we did. So it's, it's a story that takes place. We begin in Viking times, because we're rebooting vampires from, straight, uh, from scratch. So we begin in vampires times when they capture this guy, they can't kill him. They lock him up in a crypt. They hop on a Viking ship. They take him across the Atlantic. They bury him in Maine and then they go back. Hmm. And then, you know, a uh, thousand or so years later, uh, this troubled teen who is a foster kid who's really struggling with her foster family, uh, foster parents especially, stumbles upon this thing uh, she has recently tried to save a bird with a broken wing and it didn't end well so now she brings home this man from the woods that comes out of this crypt and puts him up in the barn not realizing what he is and he doesn't know what he is because he hasn't fed in over a thousand years wow you're working on multiple things all the time and, and you're just my hero what can i say Thank you, Tony. Uh, I got, I'm going to tell you a top secret thing that I actually can leak. I am right now negotiating my contract for a musical for next summer. And, uh, and that's going to be really cool. And it brings me back to my roots where I came from uh, because it's set in a hip hop uh, environment. Wow. Uh, it's going to be shot over multiple cities uh, and, and, and between here and Canada. So I'm really excited to take this thing on. It's a little terrifying because it's a much bigger project. My budget jumped umpteen times <laughs> compared to what I've done in the past. But but I know I'm the right guy for this uh, because uh, it comes from where I come from. I came from music. I came from dance and hip hop and break dancing and everything else. And now I get to kind of create a film that's also going to be a timepiece uh, to back when I was doing this. So I, I'm, I can't even tell you how excited I am to, to embark on that one.
sometimes we can do things that exclude others. You're still talking to your friends. It's complicated. I think he went back in. We gotta go get him. Welcome to Jumanji! Even the smallest words and actions can have a big effect on someone. You have the skills. Because of you, someone's entire day, their year, or their life can change. Remember, the future is in your hands. Visit becauseofyou.org to learn more. Totally, let's do it. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Well, I hope one of the cities that you come to is Salt Lake City right here, and we've got a, a lot of singers and dancers here, so. I would, I would love to, but I, uh, this one, I think is gonna be Detroit and Toronto. Nice. Uh, where they have it all because the studios that were going inside and shooting the interiors are in Toronto. Uh, so that's uh, so that's un unfortunately not this round. Harley, it's always a pleasure to talk with you and, and catch up. And I appreciate the time you've given me and uh, all the best to you, my friend. Thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate you. You take care. Bye bye. You too. Bye. -bye.